All right, so the first part of curve sketching, which again is all about graphing any possible function, is we want to know where this function goes up and down, or increasing and decreasing. All right, so we're going to look at intervals of, in, of intervals of increase and decrease by looking at two x values. You got x1 and x2. So x1 would be the smaller x value, where x2 would be obviously the greater one. And so we say that a function f of x is increasing on that on an interval between x1 and x2. If for any x value in the interval, uh, the first y value, f of x1, is less than the second y value, f of x2, which uh, makes sense. So if you've got something like this, a curve, well, this spot is lower than this spot, so your function is increasing, which makes sense. Now, the flip side of that is true, is that we say that any function f of x is decreasing on an interval x1 and x2 if uh, on that x value, the first y value is greater than the second y value, which again makes sense when you draw it out. But there it is in terms of our... Uh, I guess, proper math language. Now, here's what we're up to today, is using the derivative, uh, determine the intervals where f of x is increasing and decreasing if f of x is equal to x squared, and sketch the graph of f of x. All right, so first of all, I'm going to scratch, uh, sketch the graph of f of x equals x squared. I picked a nice easy function, which is just a uh, no, uh, the original base parabola, which looks like this, has a vertex of 0, 0 at the origin. And there we go. So there's our function f of x. All right, now it says using the derivative, determine the intervals where f of x is increasing and decreasing. Now I picked an easy function so that you can see exactly where it is increasing and decreasing but we're going to use the derivative to figure this out. So the first thing is, is f of x is equal to uh, x squared. Then our derivative of x squared is we bring the two down in front, subtract one from the exponent. And so our derivative is just two x. Now to find, and this is what we looked at last unit, to find max and min points or values, uh, we set f of x, our derivative, equal to zero. And that's because as uh, the tangent line at this point is horizontal, which means it's neither, oops, neither, decreasing or increasing at that spot. So it's like the break-even spot. All right, so now when I do that, uh, I set my derivative equal to zero. So therefore, zero is equal to two x. Well, to solve this equation, again, I picked a nice easy one. It's just gonna be x equals zero makes this equation true. And this is what we call x equals zero, a critical number. Because something's happened there, maybe. Well, something is happening there. We just uh, want to know what it is. And that's eventually one of the skills we're going to develop here. All right, so now I know that x equals zero is a critical number right here. Ah, let's do a nice, nice brighter color. Again, I got the original graph here because we're going to get more complicated functions that we don't know. All right, so now what I'm going to do is make a chart to describe what is happening with this function at x equals zero and when x is before zero and when x is after zero. And to figure out whether it is increasing or decreasing, I'm going to use the derivative and find out what its value is there. Oops, derivative. All right, so when x equals zero, the derivative is zero. Nothing's happening. But again, our derivative is equal to 2x. Now, if I put a number that's less than 0 into 2x, like say negative 2, well, 2 times negative 2 is negative. Any value is, and so our derivative is 
it's negative when x is less than 0. And so therefore, our function is decreasing when x is less than 0. All right, now, x is greater than 0. Again, plug in any number that's greater than 0, like 1. 2 times 1 is 2. 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Either way, what's happening here is our derivative is positive, which means our function at that point is increasing. Now, again, the reason for that is the derivative is the slope of your tangents. And so if I look at the slope of my tangents, they're negative, which means my function is decreasing. But then after 0, the slope of my tangents are changing, but positive. And so my function is increasing. All right, now it says graph the function of f of x. Well, the function of, uh, of the derivative of f of x, again, is equal to 2x, which means it's a linear equation with a slope of 2 and a y-intercept here of 0. And so our function, just a sketch of it, looks like this. which is telling you before 0, your derivative, the slope of your tangent, is negative. The function is decreasing. After 0, your function is positive, which means your function is increasing after 0. All right, so let's try a few more of those without a graph. All right, so example 2. Using the derivative, determine the intervals where f of x is increasing and decreasing if f of x is equal to x plus 2 times x minus 6. Well, the first thing is here is that uh, I have no idea what this function looks like. All right, but I do want to find out where it goes up and down, when it's increasing and when it's decreasing. And so I'm going to find the derivative. Now, the problem with this function, or not the problem, but the issue here is it's a, uh, a function times a function. So I'm going to have to use the product rule. All right, so I take the, uh, the derivative of x plus 2, uh, which is just 1, and then times uh, the second one, then plus uh, the first function, times the derivative of the second, uh, x minus, well, it's just going to be a 1. All right, so our derivative here of this function is equal to, well, it's just going to be x minus 6 uh, plus x plus 2, because the ones aren't doing anything. And that's going to give us uh, a derivative of, we got two x's and then uh, minus 4. So there we go. I just found the derivative. Now, of course, I want to find critical points. So I'm going to set our derivative equal to 0 which means 0 is going to equal our derivative, which again is 2x minus 4. All right, so again, solving here. So I'm going to move that negative 4 over to the other side. So it becomes positive. And if I divide both sides uh, by 2, I get uh, x equals 2. And so my critical number here is x equals 2. All right, so something happens there. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. Some people uh, like just do uh, a little line here or a chart. So I go x equals 2. After that, I'm worried about x is greater than 2. Whoops. Greater than 2. And then, and again, this line extends, keeps going. And then we have x is less than 2. Now, again, at x equals 2, I know the derivative is 0. But what happens uh, less than 2? So again, my derivative is 2x minus 4. And so I need to pick a number less than 2 and plug it into 2x minus 4 and just see whether it is positive or negative. And uh, so I'm going to pick, uh, let's see here, let's go with 0. 0 is less than 2. Uh, and so 2 times 0 is 0, and then I'd have a minus 4. So it would be negative. So my function is decreasing prior to 2. x equals 2. And uh, let's see here. f of x. Plug in a number greater than 2. So I don't know. 3. Well, 2 times 3. Again, plugging into my derivative here of 2x minus 4. So 2 times 3 is 6 minus 4. That's 2. It's positive. So my function is increasing. And so 
Ah, that's good enough. There we go. So less than 2, my function is decreasing. Greater than 2, my function is increasing. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's try another one here. A little more complicated again. Example 3, using the derivative, determine the intervals where f of x is increasing and decreasing. If f of x is equal to uh, x squared, or sorry, x divided by x squared plus 1. All right, so in this case, uh, again, I'm going to find the derivative, because I got to, and set it equal to 0. But I have a function divided by a function. So I'm going to use the quotient rule. All right, so again, you got to know how to take our derivatives. That unit 2 is the huge one where you got to learn how to take the derivative. So I take the derivative of our top function. It's 1, all right? And then times it by the bottom function, which is x squared uh, plus 1. Then I subtract uh, the top function, which is x, times the derivative of the bottom function, which is just uh, 2x. And then I have to divide it by uh, the bottom function squared. So x squared plus 1 squared. All right, now I'm going to simplify this, uh, this derivative. So I got f of x is equal to, let's see, I've got an x squared and then minus 2x times, or sorry, x times 2x is 2x squared. So I have an x squared, so an x squared minus a 2x squared, minus x squared. And then I got this 1, plus 1. And then again, I have my derivative, which is x squared plus 1 squared. All right, so there's my derivative. Now, of course, the next step, to find uh, special points, I'm going to set my derivative equal to 0. Now, this is something we had before with optimization in our last unit, is if I'm worried about where my derivative is equal to 0, I'm only worried about the bottom part, or the, sorry, the numerator. If the numerator is 0, the whole derivative is 0. So, I'm going to set 0 equal to uh, 1, and I'm going to switch this up again, minus uh, x squared. So, just setting my, uh, my numerator equal to 0. All right, now I'm going to move this negative x squared over to the other side, so it becomes a positive x squared. All right, divided by uh, r to 1. All right, then i got to, again, solve for x. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And when I take the square root, I actually get two answers, negative 1 and positive 1. All right, so I got two critical numbers. All right, so again, here's my derivative right here. I'm going to highlight that. All right, so now I need a chart. All right, so here we go. I'm going to draw my line. Uh, let's use some color here. I'm going to make it a lot longer because I have two critical numbers, so there's going to be more intervals this time out. All right, so I have uh, 1. x equals 1 here. Uh, I'm going to throw it over here, uh, x equals negative 1. All right, so then you've got the in, uh, the in between here. So I've got uh, negative 1 uh, is less than x, which is less than 1. So that's in between. Uh, over to the left here, i got uh, x is less than negative 1. All right, and then over, of course, way far to the right, we got our last interval to worry about. Uh, x is greater than 1. Okay, and again, uh, at x equals 1 and negative 1, ah, our derivative is 0. So there's a potential minimum or maximum there, and we'll get to that next class. All right, so uh, subbing in. So I'm going to try x is greater than 1 here into my derivative. So I'll pick a number like 2. So I got uh, 2 squared. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the denominator. x squared plus 1 squared. No matter what this value is in the bottom here, when I square it, I'm going to get a positive number. So my denominator is always going to be positive, which is great. Because now all I have to do is worry about the numerator. Now, that's not always the case, but this time it is. All right, so now I'm subbing in x is greater than 1, so I'll pick 2. 2 squared uh, is 4 
times negative 1 is negative 4, plus 1 is negative 3. So my derivative is less than is a negative, which means on this interval, my function is decreasing. All right, uh, now between negative 1 and 1, I'm going to go with 0. And so 0 squared is 0, so I'm just going to have a 1 up top. And so uh, my derivative there is positive, which means in this interval, uh, my function is uh, decreasing. All right, now uh, let's see here. Less than negative 1. So a negative 2. Well, negative 2 squared is 4. Uh, put a negative sign in front of that. It's negative 4 and add 1 and still get negative 3. And so my function is uh, decreasing here as well because my derivative is negative for any value. All right, so now I know it's decreasing. Uh, whoops, positive here. This should say increasing because the derivative is positive. There, there we go. Fix that. All right, so uh, it says sketch the graph of f of x. All right, now the first thing is if we want to sketch a little graph here, there's two key points here. f of x is negative at negative 1 and 1. And so I'm going to find out the value of f of x, negative 1. And so all I do is substitute into my original function here, all right, which is x divided by x squared plus 1. And why don't I do that up here? So again, my two key values are at negative 1. And I did plug in negative 1, and I got uh, negative 0 0.5. And I also plugged in 1 into this equation, and I just got 0.5. All right, so here's why I'm doing that. Just some points, because again, they're the key values. So at negative 1, again, this is just a sketch. I got a point right about here. At 1, I have a point uh, right about here, at a half. Now, it says from x is negative 1, my function is decreasing. So whatever happens with this function, I'm decreasing all the way to negative 1. Something like that. Just a sketch. Then between negative 1 and 1, I'm increasing. So it's going to go up like this. And then after 1, it's going down. Now I don't know how much. We'll get it to that kind of stuff. But there's a kind of a sketch of our graph. All right, now the second part down here, it says uh, sketch the derivative. All right, well, uh, again, I got key spots at negative 1. In one. So it says my derivative is negative before negative one. So it's down here somewhat. Comes up. Then after, and then at negative one, it's zero. And then it is positive. Now again, these decreasing, increasing, and decreasing are talking about our original function. But the negative, positive, and negative talk about our derivative. And so our derivative is positive between negative one and one. And then it uh, is negative after that. So it's down here somewhere. And there we go. So there's a sketch of our derivative. And also a sketch of our graph. Again, just a sketch. We'll get to uh, specifics as, the, as this unit moves along. All right, now the last part here, kind of doing the same idea. It says draw the graph of a function with each of the following characteristics. Okay. So it says we have points here. f of negative 2 and f of 4 is equal to 5. So I can actually right off the bat plot those points, but we'll get to that. But then it says our derivative is less than 0 for x is less than negative 1. Okay. Uh, f of our derivative at negative 1 is 0. Okay. And then after 0, uh, or sorry, yeah, for our derivative is positive uh, when x is greater than negative 1. All right, so negative one's a key spot. We'll get to that, though. First off, though, is graphing the points. f of negative 2 and f of negative 4 is 5. So we're going to have a height of 5 up here. And at, uh, let's see, I'll go. there's negative 2. And there's negative 1. And then, of course, we got to go all the way to 4. So try to make them nice and equal. So there's a 2 there, 3, and then 4. All right, so first off... I've got points. Uh, at 4, we have a height of 5. 
So that's that point there. And then negative 2, we also have a height of 5. There we go. All right, now, a key spot here is negative 1. Now, it says f of x for less than, uh, is less than 0 for x is greater than, or x is less than negative 1. All right, now, that means our function is decreasing when for x is less than negative 1, because the derivative is always negative until negative 1. So our function is going to be constantly decreasing all the way down to negative 1. I guess right to there. Now, I don't know where that point is. That's something we will solve in the future. But then after, neg and then negative 1, uh, the derivative is equal to 0 at negative 1, which means we have a bottom spot there, it looks like. Because after negative 1, our function is increasing because our derivative is greater than 0. It's positive. And so our function is going to increase and eventually hit this point. So there's a sketch of our graph. Again, I don't know how low this function goes, but I do know that it just decreases till that point and then increases afterwards. And then it has to go through our two points. And again, that's just a glimpse of where we're headed in terms of uh, graphing our functions. But right now we are finding the derivative, finding key spots by setting the derivative equal to zero, and then finding out whether our function is increasing or decreasing before or after that key spot key x value uh, by looking at the sign of the derivative. Again, if the sign of the derivative is negative, our function is decreasing. And if the sign of our derivative is positive, then our function is increasing at those spots or those intervals.